sunlight and plants, the alchemy of life. The source of energy to power the natural world. And nature uses that energy as efficiently as possible. Every creature has been shaped by natural selection for economy. Every creature except for one. When humans unlock the secret of fire, they unleashed enough energy to free us from natural constraints. Energy that fueled a series of revolutions. The Bronze Age, the Iron Age, the Age of Industry. The Industrial Revolution changed the way we live, producing energy and materials in quantities we never had before. But at what cost to our planet? In recent years, our lives have been transformed by yet another revolution, an information revolution, built on the backs of those that have gone before. Industrial and digital man has grown apart from nature, but now the new science of biomimetics is taking us in a different direction. Understanding the basic principles behind nature's energy and information revolutions offers radical new ways of living our own lives on planet Earth. Every living creature needs energy. And luckily, the world is full of renewable energy sources. Food, that comes in a huge variety of shapes and sizes. But the real challenge is to find food without becoming a meal yourself. This ancient battle has driven the evolution of many different ways of refueling. Some of them very spectacular. This way of finding energy has attracted the attention of engineers. What if robots could do the same? But we needn't fear for our children and pets just yet. Ecobot can't match skills honed by millions of years of evolution. But it does get its energy in the same way, by digesting flies. It can't catch them yet, though the next version will. It has to be fed dead flies, which are digested in a special microbial fuel cell. This uses chemical energy, driven by bacteria decomposing the fly, to produce a trickle of electricity. But even after a hearty meal of flies, it doesn't produce much electricity. Ecobot has to sit for several minutes digesting its meal before it's stored enough energy to move a couple of centimeters. And that's it. Until it's digested a bit more fly. But the system does work. Ecobot has been programmed to move towards a light source and to take a few test measurements on the way. A 
over 20 minutes or so, it covers a couple of meters. All on nothing more than a lunch of flies. In ecological terms, Ecobot is a predator. But nature's food chain starts much lower down. And it's here that bio-inspired thinking might hold the key. Not just to self-refueling robots, but to how we make and use energy. A whole new future for humanity. Ultimately, the energy budget of the natural world depends on plants or bacteria. The raw fuel is sunlight, and every leaf or blade of grass is busy converting this to high-energy sugars or carbohydrates that feed the rest of the world. These are nature's power plants. Our planet is run on photosynthesis. Photosynthesis even fueled the growth of civilization. The Industrial Revolution was built on the dead remains of plants, buried and transformed into coal. These plants trapped the energy of the sun, beating down on the earth hundreds of millions of years ago. When humans mastered fire, they could unlock that ancient energy by burning. But the cost is to gradually fill our atmosphere with carbon dioxide. Even today, most of our energy, powering our ultra-modern, computerized lifestyles, comes from this crude process of setting fire to prehistoric plants. Nature suggests there are other ways. Like leaves, solar panels make energy from sunlight. And nature can help make our designs more efficient. For maximum efficiency, a solar panel needs to absorb as much light as possible. And that's also a problem faced by animals that need to see in low light levels. Evolution has designed eyes that can see in light levels in which we are blind. Moth eyes absorb every last scrap of light to help them navigate through the night sky. And they do this by having an anti-reflective coating on the outside of their eyes. Magnified over 25,000 times, the surface of the eye is covered in tiny, precisely spaced bumps that stop light bouncing off, and so increase how much is absorbed. It only works because of the exact spacing of the micro bumps. An incredible example of natural nanotechnology. Now, modern technology can match nature's achievement and produce a similar micro surface. Trademarked under the name Moth Eye, these structures are so small and so precisely arranged that the Fraunhofer Institute in Freiburg had to develop new manufacturing techniques to work at this scale. A light-sensitive coating on a sheet of glass has been exposed to a precise holographic pattern of laser light. When the coating is washed off, the areas fixed by the light pattern are left, forming a surface covered in micro bumps that work in exactly the way a moth's eye does. Because they absorb almost all light falling on them, very little remains to be reflected. The difference is remarkable. Half of this monitor is covered in a conventional surface, the other half with moth eye. Looking straight onto the surface, there's not much difference. But at an angle, the moth eye surface on the right cuts out all the glare.
Moth-eye technology will also work on solar panels, increasing the amount of light absorbed